Hey guys, Haz here at Shield K9. So we're going to be doing session number two with Dizzy here. And um, today we're going to be focusing, oh, session number two of focus healing, just to be clear. Um, so today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about motion in focus healing. Okay, so before uh, the first session, what we worked on was finishes. Right? So finishes, just as a reminder, basically how the dog gets next to you. All right? So today, what I'm going to do is we're going to talk about movement, motion, okay? And I work those things separately in the beginning. I do not work them together, all right? Now, ahead of time, I'm going to say, please forgive me if the camera moves out of focus. It's an auto camera. So, I don't know, sometimes it goes off in the la-la land. Um, I'm going to try to get everything in angle and we'll see how it goes. So, with motion, there's a couple of things. There's the mechanics, and then there's the rhythm and the expression. Okay? So mechanics are, how does the dog move next to you? Does your dog know how to move next to you? So think about the four directions of movement. Okay? We've got forwards, backwards, left, and right. Your dog should know how to move with you in all those, in all those quadrants. Okay? So, forwards. Right? Dog knows how to move forward. Okay? Backwards. Okay, eat the food there, and left, all right, let's go, I'll do it right from here, guys, so left, all right, and right, good, all right, so those are the four uh, pieces of movement that we need to be concerned with. Now, how do we train this? Well, in the beginning, obviously Dizzy has some work done on her. In the beginning, what I like to do is I just teach the dog to follow my hand with the food. So I take my hand, I fill it with some kibbles, and I just get the dog moving after my hand. And I reward the dog, right? If it helps, you just walk backwards. Right? Now, your dog may be a little bit confused. So you see, I give my hand a little wiggle. I have some food in there. Okay? And just get the dog familiar with following your hand. Then what you can start to do is you can hold your hand like this over the dog and you can start to show the dog, okay, just how to follow your hand. Now I know I'm dropping some kibble because I'm grabbing big handfuls and when she's eating it out of my hand I drop some. I can fix this problem later because it will cause a problem where the dog after every reward starts to smell the ground. Um, so with you, be careful with this because it can cause the dog to constantly check out, especially certain kinds of dogs, it can cause a problem. So anyways, once you've got the dog willing to follow, follow that hand, it's time to start to show the dog how to move next to you. So, this is what I do, I just walk. That's it, right? And I just start to get the dog comfortable in this position. Right? And when I start to see this behavior, just a few steps, then, you know, I'm like, okay, now it's time for me a little bit to work on the, 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 four, the four quadrants of movement, okay? So, Let's talk first about moving forward. All right, so I'm going to walk. I have my hand here in her nose. One step. Okay, and I reward. All right, so that's forward. One step. That's it. And I reward. Okay. Now, once I have this, I'm going to teach the dog to walk backwards. All right, so. And the other thing too, you'll notice sometimes she's in and out a little bit with her butt. I'm going to try my best to keep her straight as I do this. I'm going to push in and down and pull up. There it is. Backwards. Okay? Now obviously in the beginning she was a little bit more clumsy, so you have to be patient. Alright. And down. Up. And I'm saying down and up for you guys, not for the dog. Okay? So Again, watch my hand. Dog is forward. I'm 
just going to award her here forward because I've done a few. Okay, bring her back next to my front foot there. Dog goes backwards. Good. <laughs> okay. So, I've got my forwards and my backwards. Now, how am I going to do left and right? All right, well, for left, really easy. We already did it with the finish. I'm going to turn her head out, and I'm going to reward. Maybe next time I need to do it a little bit farther, or she might have been a tiny bit crooked there. So again, you're going to see from this angle again. Turn her head out, and she got... So here's important, right? I'm not going to reward this. Because as I did this, the dog got out of position. So we're going to do it again. Turn the head out. That's it. And it's because that time I turned her too much and moved my hand too far forward, so the dog ended up out of position. As with what I spoke about in session number one, do not reward your dog in bad positions. Just reset the dog and start again. So again. There we go. And you'll notice I always kind of feed off to the left. And that's because with her, she has a tendency to lean into me and to put her butt um, out. And that's going to cause a problem later on if I reward this. So, let's talk about the right turn. So the right turn, I'm going to move around and forward. There we go. And I don't want the dog to end up behind me. If you don't do this properly, the dog will end up behind you or too far in the front. So, around and forward. Good movements. Now, once the dog understands these movements, and by the way, I don't ever do just one thing in a session, okay? I'll do one thing primarily, but I'll go back and work on some other stuff too. So for me, with a, with a heel session, I'm going to be like, okay, I'm going to work on my four quadrants of movement, or I'm going to work on rhythm. Now, rhythm is where things get really complicated, okay? All dogs have a natural rhythm, okay? A way that they can walk with expression. The best kind of analogy I can think of is a dressage horse, okay? You see, if you ever watch dressage, you know the horse is kind of like dancing, like they're moving but they're dancing, it's very beautiful, right? With good healing, it's the same, all right? Where the, horse, where the dog basically dances next to you, but every dog has a little bit of a different rhythm. And it's our job to help the dog find his or her natural rhythm. Driving forward with the hind legs and reaching, sorry, driving with the hind legs and reaching forward with the front legs and with a nice head position and keeping the body straight and in line with the handle. She has a good natural rhythm now and everything's going well there. Okay, this is very important. So, the way that I work on the rhythm is once I have a basic understanding where the dog will follow my hand, I basically just move forward. There you go. And I keep my hand where I want the dog's head to be, and I start walking, not too slow, not too fast, and we find the rhythm. Yeah, 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 good girl. You'll also notice Praise from me to the dog, and not very far, okay? And what is she doing? Her head's nice and up. She's driving forward with the hind legs and starting to reach a little bit with the front legs. That's what I want. It takes a while for the dog to learn to walk like this. It's not natural for them, right? Or for some dogs, I shouldn't say not natural for them. For some dogs, it is natural, okay? So I've had puppies where it's like, it's so natural, and they're prancing, and it's beautiful. And then there's some puppies, like her and like Gage, where it's not natural, they're a little bit clumsy and they don't have like the most natural, beautiful heel and you have to slowly manufacture it. So what I do is I really kind of also work on the emotion of the dog, get the dog excited, get the dog amped, and then I move into my motion, right? Yeah, 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 good girl, good, right? And I start to do short little repetitions of working on the rhythm. And when the rhythm feels good, yeah, that's when I reward. 
okay? Now look, some dogs, you don't have to do any of this stuff. You just teach them how to correctly heal, and they'll find their own rhythm on their own. But I see a lot of dogs crabbing and hopping and doing all this stuff. Like, for instance, my competition dog, Onyx, okay? My competition dog, Onyx, he doesn't have nice healing. He has correct healing somewhat, but not nice healing. I didn't put the foundation in the dog. I got him at three years old with some bad foundation in him that I had to work for a year to fix. So this is one thing that you have to be prepared for is in the beginning, you help the dog find their natural rhythm and then let them get really comfortable in that place and really learn to start to be expressive. Hey, 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 get out of there. Yeah. I don't want her smelling that mat. Who knows what's going to happen if she smells that mat for too long. So, it's really important. My hand is in the correct position, okay? Dog's next to me, praising the dog, rewarding off to the left, especially for her because she tends to want to put her butt out. And also, there's another little trick that you can do. It's the spin trick, okay? And I got this from Marco Cosconsalo. Credit where credit is due. I'm, I'm sure I'm not doing everything that he does, but uh, the little spin, I like it. Okay, so I'll show you. Yeah, spin. Yes. And the spin, what it does um, is it creates the expectation. The dog starts to expect that spin. And the anticipation of the spin helps to keep the dog straight instead of kind of crabbing inwards. Okay? So, just helping the dog find that. Yeah. Yeah. Way, good girl. Helping the dog find that natural rhythm and promoting the dog in this behavior, okay? So for me, what a session will look like is maybe I'm gonna work on the, uh, the, the movement, the overall movement, right? And, you know, work on the correct movement. Maybe I'll make that the focus of my session. And then once in a while, just to open the dog up, we're gonna go into that, we're gonna go into that rhythm work, okay? You always manage to drop one kibble. What's wrong with you? Okay? So, pick one. Say, you know, I'm going to work on rhythm. And remember, this is important when you're doing rhythm. Do not reward the dog for bunny hopping. Okay? You know what? In fact, I'm going to show you with, um, with Gage, because he's really bad for that. She's really starting to find herself. He's a little bit worse for the rhythm. He likes to bunny hop and push and crowd. And you have to hold off and wait until the dog gives you a couple of good steps and then offer that reward. It's really, really important. Okay. The other thing with her too, you'll notice that she doesn't bark at me, right? And she's a little bit, little bit closed. It's not, part of it is I'm talking too much, right? But I need to start, I'm going to start to open her up and I have to teach her to bark at me. And that will be big for her. When she starts to bark at me, you're going to see the power. Yeah. Yeah, that she brings, that she brings, right? She's a little bit sensitive. She's a little bit worried, but part of her, part of her becoming stronger as a dog is going to be me making her a little bit tougher with me in terms of handler, correct? Like handler, handler pressure. I want the pressure to open her up, not suppress her. But that's something that for her is not natural. For Gage, it's natural. For her, a little bit suppressed easily by the hammer, so I need to make her stronger. Yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah! And I want my pressure to make her more, and I know I talked about this in session one, I want my pressure to bring more power, maybe I have to let her bite me a few times. Yeah, 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 yeah! Right? But I want her to be able to handle me being rough with her. Be pretty tough with her. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Right? Become more confident in herself. Anyways, that's enough with Kizzy. I'm going to pull Gage out. You guys can see with Gage. Okay, guys, I got Gage here. So I'm going to start to show you a little bit of some motion with him. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, making a liar out of me. Well, you see there? He was really going pa 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 pa. That's what I'm looking for. He does tend to bunny hop. Let me see if I can get him to screw up on purpose.
Okay, he's a little pushy, but he's not screwing up, which means, hey, the training's working. He's starting to learn what it is that I want. Um, so, what? <laughs> We got fire in the making. 